Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you part 12 in our walkthrough for Nancy Drew, Tomb of the Lost Queen. We are trying to figure out how to do destiny for the, the pathway into the golden sarcophagus. Is Lily here? We could chat with Lily quick. Nancy, things are moving. I heard the pillars moving! This place is seriously messed up. I noticed that, but... I don't think we're in any danger. And you're basing this on what? Previous experience? Call it a hunch. At this point, I'd rather call it a day. I need to calm down. This is a huge opportunity and probably not a death trap. Right? Right. There was a cobra on my bed. That is crazy. You're lucky you didn't get hurt. Is it still in there? No, I took care of it. Well, I'm never getting any sleep tonight. I imagine you aren't either. I take it you're not a fan of snakes. No one on Earth is a fan of snakes. If it lives on dry land and does not have feet, it should not exist. Even thinking about snakes gives me the creeps. That's how I feel about spiders. Snakes don't bug me. Spiders, they bug me. Do you know what caused the cave-in that got Dylan? The curse! No, I mean what really caused it. Call it what you want. This is the Carter expedition all over again. You know what happened to them? A series of unrelated accidents resulting from subpar medical practices? No. When the expedition ended, they started to drop like cursed flies. Madness. Diseases. Strange accidents. The worst part of this curse is that I don't know if we'll ever really be in the clear. Are you okay? You seem pretty worried. I had a dream. Nefertari was in my dream. Sounds spooky. It was. What happened? She told me that it was too late. Too late? For what? Too late for us to leave. My phone doesn't work. All I want is to call my family and my stupid phone doesn't work. Oh, we're going to be fine. No, we're not. Leave me alone, okay? No. <laughs> Abdullah seems really harsh. That's just how he is. I knew what I was setting myself up for when I came here. I have to admit, I overheard that argument between you and Abdullah. Are you okay? You did? What did you hear? I'm not sure, really. It just sounded pretty bad. It was. He can be rough to work with, but he's the best. I just have to get better and not make such stupid mistakes all the time. Is there anything I can do? Yes. I need your help sorting amulets. This has always been the thing I've been worst at. Please say you'll help. I'll help you out whenever you need it, I promise. Sure thing. Great, thanks. They need to be sorted by what they represent and by what power they had. They're on the table in the other tent. <laughs> oh, are we doing that now? Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna keep talking. I guess let's go sort some amulets. In the tent here. I'd better listen. I never agreed to this. No one was supposed to be hurt. Absolutely not. What is Jamila up to? No one was supposed to be hurt. Interesting. Okay, I think if we use the pick here <coughs> to break the vase, you get an egg. Uh, scarab egg, cool. So, amulets. I need to sort these amulets by type. So by their different uh, things that they represent. Mm -hmm. Guardian of the dead, good luck, love, military valor, health, motherhood, regeneration, wisdom, and rebirth. So big uh, assistance for this is going to be this book. Amulets were an indispensable part of ancient Egyptian life worn by both the living and the dead to provide the wearer with special powers and protections. A wide variety of different shapes, materials, and colors was available. From a golden fly for military achievements for military valor to a fish for good luck. Okay. Fish for good luck. Okay. Funerary amulets played a particularly important role in burying the dead. The deceased journeyed to the underworld and afterlife was believed to be aided by placing various amulets between the layers of their linen wrappings. One of the most commonly used amulets was in the shape of a scarab. As the sacred animal of the god Kepri, the scarab embodied his same powers, most notably rebirth. So a scarab, which 
which I'm assuming is just this beetle, symbolize rebirth. Okay. Other amulets in the animal form of a god or goddess also imbued similar powers as their full human or animal-headed human counterparts. Okay, amulets were believed to confer special powers on their wearer. Thus, an amethyst monkey was a love charm. Monkey for love. Not sure why, but okay. A felspar hedgehog symbolized rebirth. So the hedgehog is rebirth. A basalt baboon imparted wisdom. Baboon for wisdom. Regular animals not attached to a god held their own powers based on their behavior in the natural world. A hare, given its ability to survive in the unforgiving desert, symbolized regeneration. Okay, so hare is regeneration. Regenerative powers were also attached to animals like the hippopotamus that lived in the renewing waters of the Nile, the lizard with its ability to regrow a lost tail, and the baby frogs that would magically appear after a flood. So, hippo, lizard, frog. Hippo, lizard, and frog all symbolize regeneration. Okay. Funerary amulets offered even more choices. Depictions of the sons of Horus, the animals, Happy, Duamatef, and Quaben and the human Imseti gave protection over the embalmed organs on both canopic jars and amulets. Food offerings in the form of trust and tied animals and birds provided meals for the deceased in the afterlife. <laughs> meals for the deceased in the afterlife. Food offerings, so probably that. What was it? Symbols in the form of trust and tied animals and birds. So that would probably be a food offering, right? That's a bird. Headrests and depictions of clothing allowed the deceased to bring their possessions with them. The Eye of Horus then became a symbol of health and life. Health, right? Okay. Okay, is that all of them? So then, I think the Ankh, am I missing one? I think I'm totally missing one. I'm an amulet short. If I were to guess, though, the Ankh is probably the guardian of the dead. Because that's close to the symbol of the uh, god of the underworld, isn't it? And then military valor sounds like a lion, and motherhood sounds like a cow. But then we're missing one. I'm short an amulet. I hope they don't... Oh, they all leave. Oh my gosh, that's so frustrating. Okay, so I guess we have to keep an eye out for any other amulets. That's annoying. Super duper annoying. Okay. Cool. After all that work, and then it just disappears. Don't you love when that happens? You work so hard at something. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's go back into our room, because we were going to try and figure out how to spell destiny. Um, wrong book. With the, or the, um, not destiny, but the cat's name is Meskinet. I'm going to write down really quickly. Mes-he-net. Right? Yep, yeah, okay. So, if we were trying to figure out how to spell that, I wonder if it would be these exact signs, you know? Like, owl, maybe. And then E would be the arm. S would be... Would S be um, either a loop or like two spoons <laughs> together? Spoon. I'm just trying to draw this out really quick. Two spoons together, and then K K H could be either of these, or it could be K and H separately. Because K itself is like this bowl, and then H is kind of the loopy deals on top of each other, and then E would again be the arm, N is kind of a squiggle line, 
E again is the arm, and then T would be like a half circle. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's see if we spelled out mesconnect correctly. Or if we are totally in the dark. Um, can we talk to her more? I can't figure out those amulets. Can you help me again? I can't right now. Sorry. That's okay. I'll figure it out myself eventually. Well, I'll get it, but one of the amulets is missing. Have you noticed anything strange going on? Sorry, I really can't talk right now. I've got to figure out those amulets. <coughs> Okay, so she's not going to talk to us until we do the amulets. We need to find the last one then, because we're totally missing one. Um, are there any over here? Hello, missing amulets. I would love to to have you. Did any of them show up anywhere? You know how things like to show up randomly. Um, I don't see anything in here. How about if we go down the middle section? That's where the scarab randomly showed up. Do we got an amulet? No? Hmm. What about... I mean, this is the way we were going anyway. Can we get her to leave? Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. I want to look in the bag. What's in the bag? Is it a shark or something? <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. Great line. Great movie. Um, where am I going? Oh yeah, this way. Wait, this way. <laughs> it opened up over here. Let's see if destiny really is the path. So, oh. Well, none of those are an M. Am I spelling out Mesconet or am I spelling out the destiny? Is Mesconet in here as a name? No. Did I totally mess that up? Am I crazy? Glyphs. The path lies in destiny. Do, 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 do. Hmm. The cat's name is Mesconet. Does it, oh, you know what would be smarter and would make a lot more sense if we were to actually go back to the cat's tomb and look at how it's spelled down here. That would make a lot more sense. <laughs> okay, so if the glyphs are looking to the left, you read it from left to right and up and down, I think. I'm pretty sure. So, genius. Um, I'm gonna write down this in order. It's like the open rectangle, a cat, a crane, a bug, a swirl, and then another cat, the loopy deal, cat, and worm. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. See, that would be so much smarter, you guys. Um, I was just seeing if you were paying attention, you know? If you noticed that there was a much smarter way to be doing this. And you were just shouting at it, shouting it at me through the screen. Okay, so open rectangle, cat, crane, bug, or scarab, swirly dealy, cat, cat, a uh, loopy dealy. Another cat, and then worm. Look, we did it. We are masters of destiny. We're so good at this. Okay, what do we got in here? Um, wow, wow. These look just like the symbols from Lily's game. I should talk to her about it. Yeah, for sure, all these different symbols. Okay, cool. What was that? Okay, okay, secret passageway. We love that. We love a secret passageway. Um, so we can't do any of those yet. That'll help us open up the game, though. But we need to finish the amulets, and I don't have them all. Where did, did I... 
I come from? What is this? Can I translate that? What does this say? Can I not translate it? Do I have to ask to translate it? Apparently, I can't do that. Oh! Can't open it. It's locked. There's like a gate. Okay, that's good to know, I guess. And then... Oh! Ha, that looks like the hand from Secret of the Scarlet Hand. Oh! Cool! Neat. Very neat. Okay, okay. Loving this. Love it. What was that? Can't take this right now. He has like a on an amulet that oh. Yes. I found a gold coffin. It could be Nefertari. I must see this. Yeah, get out of my way so I can steal whatever this is. Oh, it's a key to your trunk, yeah. Yeah. Love that. Okay. Now we gotta go get rid of Lily so I can dig in your trunk. Can you help me sort all of those amulets? Well, sure. Great, thanks. They need to be sorted by what they represent and by what power they had. They're on the table in the other tent. I can't get her to leave until I... Until I find the other amulets. Okay, well, let's go do the bird puzzle, because I know we can do that. Because now we have all of the um, birdies. So if we back up... All the birds are here. I must need to press them in a certain way. I need to figure out what it is. So that is from the journal entry that we found. The pages. Um, here we go. So this is the order that we need to do them in. And I'm finding my notes. So first we need to do the poofy-headed bird. Which... That looks like the vulture. Oh, here's the poofy-headed one. Okay, so that's the first one. And then we need to do the one that looks like a flamingo. Which I think is this one. No, this one? Which one looks like the flamingo? Ooh. That... Oh... This one? Let's, let's go with this one. Let's try that. Okay, and then the hawk-looking one, which I think is this. And then the vulture-looking one, which is this. Oh, this also... No, that's, that's the hawk. Okay, let's try this. One, two, three. That's definitely the hawk. And then the vulture. That looks like the vulture the most. And then there's, like, a brown duck. It's just kind of a standard-looking duck. But not this duck. They look exactly the same. What's the difference? Okay, let's try this duck first. And then the quail-looking thing, which might be this one or this one. Let's try this one, and then the other duck, and then the crane-looking thingamabobber. Is that right at all? No. Okay. So, let's try that again. Definitely this one, and then the flamingo-looking one, which... That looks more like an ibis. So maybe it is this one. It's the one with the long beak. Let's try this one. One, two, and then the hawk, which is definitely this one. The vulture, probably that one. The brown duck, which I th think, because the, the last duck standing in the boat is the one that has like a darkish beak, which I think is this one, so I think it's this first one. And then the quail, which let's try this one. And then the blue duck, and then the crane. Okay, not that. We'll figure this out eventually. Okay. Poofy head. Is this the vulture? Not the vulture. The flamingo? Ugh, flamingo. Um, hawk. Vulture. Brown duck. Quail. Blue duck. Crane. Okay. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. Um, because I'm leaning really far forward. I kind of want to go look at the picture again and get a better look at it. 
because I don't think my notes are very good. My notes could definitely be more detailed in helping me figure this out. Okay, he's spending a long time looking at the stuff. Oh, we don't get to watch her jump again? That's no fun. Okay. Oh, wrong way. What am I doing? That's the procession of the gods, not the birds. What are you doing, Nancy? Again, I'm, ju I'm just seeing if you guys are paying attention. This <laughs> very clearly what this is. Okay. So, defining features. I almost want to, like, sketch out what these birds look like. Because they are definitely very specific looking. So the first one, I mean the poofy headed one I'm pretty positive on, but the flamingo is kind of more like, it's pink, it has a long beak, and it has a rounded head, and then kind of like a long loopy neck and its body goes up quite a ways and kind of leans back into almost a rectangular wing that has stripes on it and a body that kind of follows that same line and then some pretty big legs and feet. Okay, so I sketched out the flamingo, that's helpful. It's got a little eye. Okay. And then the uh, the crane's pretty obvious. The vulture could be different. And then the brown duck and the blue duck. Like, how do I distinguish the difference between the duck? Oh, one of them has, like, a rounded beak. And then one of them has a pointy beak. The brown duck has a pointy beak. His head is, like with point beak and the blue duck is got they've got a head which is good you kind of need a head but their beak has kind of more of like a little hook underneath it okay so that's really the only difference between them their eyes are a little bit different too Okay, the vulture is very distinct looking. The hawk is very distinct. The quail definitely has, I think it's a quail. I don't even know if it's a quail. I could be saying something totally wrong. But it's got kind of a pointy thing off the back of its head and a teeny little beak. Oh, my drawing looks horrible. <laughs> I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> okay, so rounded head, teeny little beak, and it's got like a just, What's a, there's like a cartoonish kid. Isn't it like Little Rascals or something where I've got like that pointy little hair sitting off the top of it? That's definitely what it looks like. So that's the quail-ish thing. And the vulture is maybe the only other thing that I need to like sketch out. Because the vulture has almost that L-shaped head going on. And then the loopy body which is very, like, vulture-esque. Okay. That gives me something to work with, at least. And teeny little feet. All right, kind of goofy sketches, but they'll, I think they'll help out a little bit. So let's go back. Good hints for anyone else trying to figure this out look up. Okay, so first I need the one with the poofy head. And then I need my flamingo. So which one looks the most like my flamingo? It's got a long, I think it's this, because it's got the U-shaped neck. Yeah, and the long beak. It's definitely got to be this one. None of the other ones have a neck like that. And then we have the hawk definitely this one and then we have the vulture which I think is I'm, it has to be this one just based on the shape of the body of this rounded part here so it's got to be that and then we have the the brown duck and the brown one is the one with the pointy beak which actually I think might be this one because this one has more of the rounded beak so it's probably this one 
And then, so that might have been where we were messing up. The quail has a pointy thing off of the back of its head. Definitely this. Then the blue duck, which would be this one. And then the crane. There we go. It was the ducks that was messing us up. See, it's always good to go back and check your work. Ooh. Footprints. This is a match to Lily's sunglasses. What was she doing sneaking around in the tunnels? I mean, she's an Egyptologist, Nancy. <laughs> it's very, like, accusatory. What were you doing looking this at the tunnels? This looks important. That's part of your job. Someone else has been down in these tunnels recently. Why does she sound so accusatory? Like, doesn't that make sense that other people would be tramping around the tunnels? I mean, it's cool that she knew about a secret one. And a little sketchy that she didn't tell us about it, I guess. That she didn't say, hey, I know about the secret tunnel. We have a new journal entry page. Was it these? No, it was December 30th. Here we go. We lost two men last night. I cannot be sure, but I suspect cobras. The tomb is thick with hidden dangers, and it's getting worse. Three men so far in the expedition. The rest are afraid they'll be the next to die. By now, we should have found the queen. We should have found her mummy. We found only confusion and death. I am in a world with backwards rules I could never understand, in a tomb built to drag me down into the underworld by any means. I do not feel brave here as I did when our journey began. I feel like a lost, little lost girl toying with something she does not understand. January 6th. It was foolish to stay. It is reckless to be here alone, but I can't return home having been this close. How many lifetimes have been cut short searching for the queen? It is worse than that. If I cannot find her, if I die out here, I know my daughter will find the letter I wrote for her. I know she will throw her life away on this foolish quest too. Nefertari is lost forever and I no longer care. I will gather my supplies, I will find my way home, and I will destroy that letter before my daughter reads it. January 9th, I'm being punished for my lack of faith. That must be why this is happening. Something caught my eye as I was gathering the last bits of my gear. The mark. It's throughout the tomb. These lines I had assumed were from the Book of the Dead are much more than that. I am at the point where that matters little now. Sudi returned fevered and delirious, telling me that the whole expedition team fell ill on their trip home. One by one they died, shivering under the desert sun. Sudi was the last alive. I have no idea how he found his way back. I wish he hadn't. I've given him most of my water. I know he won't last the night, but I can't watch him suffer. Now I don't have enough water for the trip home. January 10th. Set out to find water, found none. A day after I laid Sudi to rest, another storm swept down on the tomb. The entrance again sealed by the restless sand. I began to feel a chill settle over my bones. How long until I find myself next to Sudi? A few hours? A day? It doesn't matter. No matter the answer, it will be too short and too long all at once. Jeez. Scary. It's like people who have found these tombs but never managed to make their way out. Alright, so another secret tunnel, which I'm assuming is now on our map. Yeah, so we have kind of a whole mapping out of this almost figure eight shape. Wow, cool. All right, well, I think I'm going to leave this part right here. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.